Hey everybody, welcome back to Dream Daddy. I'm Mike from Not French, the channel you're watching, so you already know that. Uh, okay, so last episode we told Amanda that we were gonna go watch a game somewhere else while she has a, a pillow fight sleepover party thing. So, uh, let's get on with the story then. Wow, I guess I really didn't think this plan through. I'm not entirely sure where the closest bar is, and Amanda still hasn't shown me how to use a GPS on my phone. So I'm just going to pick a direction and walk in it. That's a good idea. Probably won't get lost. Let's go this way. Cool. Okay, we're marching. We're marching in the direction of the game. Any game, really. In the distance, could it be? Jim and Kim's, look at that. A big burned out neon sign hangs above tiny dive bar. Hanes above tiny dive bar. I think it's supposed to be a tiny dive bar. Get it together, game designers. Jim and Kim's, huh? All right, it'll do. The bar is small and dimly lit. The crack of pool balls sounds in the back as patrons laugh and joke. A string of multicolored Christmas lights hover above the bartender. I can't tell if he's Jim or Kim. I pull up a seat at the bar. <laughs> That's the bartender. Sticking with it. One beer, please. Captain Boss! The bartender slides me a nice cold beer. It, it, I didn't even tell... Like, If you go to a bar, guys, and you ask for a beer, they're going to look at you like you're an idiot. You got you to gotta say what beer you want, you know? I mean, come on. The bartender slides me an ice cold brewski. I take a sip and enjoy the refreshing taste of generic beer. Say, hey, are you Jim Merkin? I'm Neil. Oh. I awkwardly turn my attention to the game, in caps, which is playing on one of the TVs on the wall. As luck would have it, my team of preference is not only played. Oh, God, yes. This was obviously written by sports fans. My team of preference is not only playing, but is currently in the lead, which is always a good thing. The brightly colored mascot, which is some kind of animal, does cartwheels. I silently cheer on my favorite team, hoping that I don't get into any confrontational arguments with a fan of the opposing team. Several people in this bar are wearing the distinctive colors of the team I dislike, although I believe from their demeanor that, like me, the passion for their team is all in good fun. Oh, hello. Mm. Use this tall glass of water. A middle-aged woman holding a nearly empty wine glass slides up to the bar and sits uncomfortably close to me. Hey, sailor. Oh, hello. Ah. Good to see fresh meat in here. I'm Mary. Come here often. Oh, no, I actually just moved to this part of town today. I'm Pepe, by the way. Ah. Are you watching the game, Pepe? Yeah, my preferred team is in the lead. If they keep this up, they'll win the game with ease. Hey. Oh, I love that team. And I also love that game. I love someone who knows their way around balls. That's suggestive. I'm getting the impression that she's a little drunk. Uh... Buy a gala drink? Mm, nope. Uh, maybe some other time? Come on. Suit yourself, sailor. Mary saunters off, setting her sights on the newest bar patron to enter. I happily watch the game over another beer. The game has gotten close in terms of points, a little too close f than what I'm comfortable with. After a particularly skilled player scores a number of points for the other team, putting them in the lead, I hear an affirmative grunt from another man at the bar. Go team. Oh, hey, it's this guy. It's the brooding man from the coffee spoon. He sits alone, sipping a whiskey and watching the game as well. Excuse me, third's rather dry. Mm -hmm. ah, ice cold, refreshing, generic water. Yum. Enjoying the game? I am now that we're winning. Oh, we must be rooting for different teams. In my opinion, my team is far superior. <laughs> what is he, Snake? 
I have to disagree with that based upon our win-loss record, I'd say that my team is superior. That's where you're wrong, since as it stands right now, my team is beating yours. The conversation ends there, and we both go back to silently rooting for our respective teams. The game is close, with both sides playing their hardest to win, but in the end, my team prevails. <laughs> Boom, go home team, or whatever team. Quiet cheers ripple throughout the bar. It's probably not home team, actually. The, the, the team they're rooting for is probably the home team. That would make sense, because they live here. I just moved in. Anyway, let's read what this is saying. I raise a respectful glass at the man drinking whiskey. He raises his in response. An unspoken truce is formed between us based on mutual love for the game. He motions to the bartender who pours two glasses of whiskey. The man slides one over to me. The name's Robert. Yeah. Thanks, son. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> it's like, I love his little prepubescent just voice crack. Thanks, I'm perfect. You must be new here. Mary already hit on you? Yeah. Robert chuckles. She's a beach. Well, you picked the best bar in town. As slimy as it is, you'll never find a better spot than Jim and Kim's. Is there actually a Jim or Kim that runs this place? I... No, that'd be Neil. Ah. Neil waves from across the bar. He's wearing a helmet. Good guy, Neil. Not enough Neils in this world. Okay. You a whiskey fella or a beer fella? Beer, but I'll drink most things. I'm an alcoholic, you see. You like shots? I love shots. Thank God. Robert nods to Neil, who serves up two shots of whiskey. He hands one to me. Here's to your health. We take the shots. The whiskey burns going down, but I try my hardest to look tough. Wait, I think this is what making friends is. Okay, Pepe, this guy's out of my friend league, but I think if I play my cards right, we'll be pals in no time. Compliment his cool leather jacket, compliment his rugged good looks, compliment his hand tattoo. Let's go for the jacket. I like your jacket. Thanks, it's been in my family a long time. Passed down from firstborn to firstborn. Cursed, some would say. Oh, God. I don't know if I can keep up these voices. It's killing my throat. Oh, I'm not equipped to do this. Oh, man, this guy's mysterious and cool. Way cooler than I am, at least. Robert signals to the bartender for another round. What are you doing here tonight? Uh, daughter kicked me out of the house, running from problems, trying to make friends. Not like forever, she was having a sleepover with her friends. Family type, huh? Single dad. Hmm. He gets up. Be right back, gotta powder my nose. And by that I mean jack off furiously. Never seen Robert this talkative, he must like you. <laughs> I guess so. I gotta admit, that Robert has a gruff charm to him. If a guy like that thinks I'm cool, then I really must be. Robert comes back from the bathroom and grabs his leather jacket. I'm gonna go home. You heading my way? Robert and I leave the bar and find ourselves walking in the same direction. I live in this cul-de-sac down the way. Does everybody live there? Yes, yes, everybody does, Pepe. Me too. We just move. We just. I'm a scat man, you see. We just finished unpacking today. Great place to be. Good neighbors. Well, some of them. Who's that? We get to Robert's house, which is just a few houses away from mine. Because we're in a cul-de-sac, so all the houses there are just a few houses away from mine. We stop, and he turns to me. I don't kiss and tell, Pepe. Oh, damn! So are we doing this or what? Oh, jeez, man, what kind of girl do you take me for? What? I... Oh, yeah, I just realized that's uh, Danny Sexbane doing the voice of him. You know, do you want to come inside or not? A wave of realization rushes over me. I blush. 
Ooh, jeez. Guys, I don't know what to do. I mean, this is our first, like, encounter like this in the game. Do I go for it or do I do I hold back? I guess we'll have to find out next time on Not French. Oh, damn, Cliffhanger. I'm such a bitch. See you guys.